guys, welcome back to another video on the Simple Car Guy channel. In this video, we're going to be solving the wastegate rattle that's very common on many turbo engines from BMW. In this case, I'm working on my BMW Z4, which has the N20 engine. Uh, this issue is very, very common on this uh, engine, which comes with many cars. Um, you can find this engine in a BMW 128, 228, 328, 428, and a few others. Uh, so hopefully this helps, uh, you know, at least a few people. This issue isn't something necessarily that's going to affect your performance. However, it does make a very rattly noise when you start the car, especially when it's cold, uh, which isn't something nice to hear in your, you know, luxury or sporty car. So the reason we have that issue is that this wastegate right here, this little flap, as you can see, it moves a lot. Like this is the old one and it's just worn out. There's a almost a quarter gap between the flap and this mechanism right here. This is the new one, no movement. I'll bring it in closer to show you better, but no movement. So there's a big difference. So even if you move them around, much more rattly. And this is actually a used part as well. I got this for 150 bucks on eBay. Um, I've also tried many other fixes, like one of these, things that goes on the wastegate actuator to kind of keep it under tension, it would keep this more under tension. It doesn't really do anything, it didn't fix my issue. I tried putting a washer right here that, that didn't fix anything either. So the actual solution and the only solution in this case is to replace the, the entire manifold. These are not removable. Uh, I mean, I've seen some people use um, upgraded parts or they weld you know, weld this part in, but for a price of a hundred, you know, under $150, why wouldn't you just put a genuine part in? This is the old one. This is a used but good. So now let's get to the removal part of the video. We're gonna have to remove this old one, which I've already done. Uh, so I'll show you the steps to do that. And then we're gonna drop this new one in using correct torques for all of the bolts and flanges and all of that stuff to make sure it's in there properly, reconnect everything else, and we shouldn't have any more rattle. One last thing to add before we start is that you should technically be removing part of the turbo, some coolant lines, uh, some oil lines that go to the turbo, but I decided to do it the kind of easier way. Uh, you do have to be very careful not to damage the turbo, especially the blades when you take the manifold out. So do it at your own risk. You know, don't take my word for it. If you're not comfortable, do it the proper way. Remove the turbo, remove all the other accessories around and, you know, do it, the, you know, that way. And since we're replacing the manifold, we're also going to adjust the wastegate uh, actuator towards the end of the video as that will make sure that our wastegate is open at the correct uh, vacuum level. It is very important that we do so. Otherwise, we may not get proper boost or have some boost leaks um, once we put everything back together. I've removed a bunch of little bolts all around, underneath there as well. I removed this heat shield. This will give us a little bit more room to work with. All right, next I just removed the bolts from the blow-off valve. I've also removed the little clip that was holding it onto the manifold. So now it should just come out. Let's see, hold the bolt so it doesn't fall. There it is. The next step is to remove the catalytic converter. So I have loosened that uh, clamp right there. So it's not holding the catalytic converter to the manifold anymore. Now we're gonna go under the car. I then removed this clamp that was holding it to the transmission right there. So there's a bolt that was in here and in there, it's the two bolts I have in my hand, and this bracket that was holding the kettle converter on. I have then removed the two bolts for the exhaust. So whatever this thing is, I don't know. So now the exhaust can be moved a little bit more. And I removed the bolt for this clamp that's holding the catalytic converter to the rest of the exhaust. So now it actually moves. I mean, not a lot, but it moves a little bit, which is a lot more than before. 
And now it's just gonna be kind of wiggling it out of here if possible. And then it should drop after. I can't really film that, so I'll let you know once it's done. After struggling for a bit, I finally got it loose. Right there. So now it's loose, it's not in the way. There you go. So that's what you want. I just want to, maybe we can put it down a little bit and that should be enough for us. As you can see, it came out a little bit here and this definitely helped because it was able to move it about an inch or two down. All right, the next part we have to remove is the clamp between the turbo and the manifold, which is right there. Let me show it to you from the top as well. Hopefully you can see it from here, but it's right there. Let me come out from the engine bay so you can see what we're talking about. So it's just right there. Right there. Well, taking that bolt off was a bit of a process. I actually broke off the bolt in there. As you can see, it just wouldn't come off. I mean, I tried from the bottom, from the top, and it would twist a little bit and that's it. So at the end, I just used one of these and basically ripped it off. Luckily, my new one comes with all that hardware, so I don't need it. All right, at this point, the only thing that should be holding the manifold to the engine are the flange nuts. There's 10 of them. So let me go in there and show you. So that's one, that's two, three, and obviously we're just gonna keep going all the way to the end of the manifold. After that, if we're lucky, it'll just pop out. piece to the puzzle was removing this uh, bolt right here I couldn't show you on the car because it's just so deep in there but it's basically that one right there in the back stuck on this thing that we took the bolt out it was just stuck on there i had to kind of muscle it out a little bit time for a new one now that we have both manifolds out it's very easy to see what was causing all the rattles at first i thought it was this which i mean this one kind of moves like that a little bit also but that's not the biggest culprit what it is is this flap right here Look at that, that's just loose. So whenever, even when it's closed, right? Like it's being held in closed, it still moves around like, like crazy. Side to side, up and down. I mean, it's worn both ways, up and down and in and out. That's how it should be. No play at all. It's recommended that you replace these um, metal gaskets whenever you remove the manifold but it's completely up to you i decided to keep the ones that came on my used part as they look to be in very good condition totally up to you though don't take my word for it <laughs> So what I believe to be the hardest part is done, and that was getting the, tur the manifold over the turbo right there without damaging anything. So I had to go super careful, and I had a little bit of a ghetto solution. Obviously there's a pin there, so I'm gonna have to, you know, put it back in place properly before it clips in, but it's over the line, and that was the hardest part. 
I did a little bit of ghetto engineering right here. Used a little bit of wire that I wound up to get the turbo pushed back towards me just a little bit. I mean, it was maybe a quarter of an inch. I had enough of that flex in order for me to get the manifold over the turbo fins. So I'm not gonna lie, getting the manifold over the bolts was a little bit difficult, but it's finally through. So you can see the bolts are through. It's all sitting nice and well in there. Now we're just gonna put the flange bolts on and get it all tight. As you can see, the bolts have to be installed in a certain sequence. So you start obviously from one all the way to two, but it alternates, you go one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on. You do it to eight newton meters first, uh, just to get it on there, I guess. And then after that, you're gonna go to 13 newton meters. My torque wrench is now set to 13 newton meters. So let's go ahead and use the proper sequence and get it all properly tightened down. All right, so we're moving along nicely. I have uh, put that uh, clamp back in there. I also put a couple bolts uh, in for the brackets that were holding the manifold in the back, uh, as well as temporarily put the wastegate actuator in and adjusted it. Check out the video. I'm gonna make that a separate video because it takes a few minutes. Uh, so the only things that are left are to attach the catalytic converter uh, and that's pretty much it. At that time, we can start the car, make sure everything works well. Once that's all good, we can put all the heat shields and protective stuff back on. Now that I'm under the car, I put a bunch of stuff back together. This is put back together. This is all tight and torqued. These are both torqued to, I think, 20 pound of torque. torque. Uh, as well as these two, that was to 41 pound of torque. So everything's torqued up. The only thing that's left is to put that clamp back on and torque that as well. So I just did the last step, which was torquing that uh, clamp right there to 9.5 pound-feet of torque. Also plugged in the vacuum line for the wastegate actuator. And other than the heat shield and all that, you know, low stuff, the car's ready to start. Let's hope it doesn't make any noise. <laughs> So as you heard yourself, there's no more rattling in the exhaust, which is awesome. This is what I've been working on for probably, I don't know, five or six hours. So I'm super, super happy that it worked. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any questions, let me know. I know I didn't put everything in the video. Otherwise it would have been like three hours long. So if you have any questions, just let me know. See you in the next one.